Hello, welcome to the Things Conference Embedded. My name is Wink Giesemann and I'm CEO and co-founder of the Things Industries. And we help companies around the world successfully build LoRaWAN end-to-end -end solutions with our LoRaWAN network server called the Things Stack. And throughout the year, we are building and creating all kinds of uh, user conferences. Uh, this edition is going to be about embedded development and about hardware, a critical component when you're building your LoRaWAN solution. This event is made possible by uh, a, a, a wide range of partners. Um, Semtech, STMicro, Cetacom, Edge Impulse, Ignirin, uh, Coitec, Seed, and many, many more, all delivering and providing content in, an, in their specialty. We also have a great lineup of speakers. Uh, we even have the CEO of the Risk Fee Foundation telling about the, about the future of open source silicon. And we have all kinds of different content pieces that dive into a specific niche. Is it antennas by Ignion or maybe certification uh, by Cetacom or power optimization by Coitec and many, many more. And they will uh, enlighten you and educate you all throughout the day. So, for, use, for you uh, out there that, that don't know what LoRaWAN is, LoRaWAN is used to transmit small pieces of data over the air from a sensor to a cloud application. And it can be used in a huge range of applications. We are, for instance, helping uh, agriculture uh, uh, use cases by, for instance, tracking cows in New Zealand, but we're also helping mining companies um, uh, with condition monitoring uh, in Chile and everything in between. So what does LoRaWAN make an exciting technology? First of all, it's ultra low power. So the operations of your IoT solutions are uh, very, very efficient. It's long range, so you have to set up very little base stations uh, uh, that uh, can uh, uh, cover a huge amount of devices. It has deep indoor, in, 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 deep indoor penetration, so it helps with, for instance, building use cases where you want to do condition monitoring. It uh, uses the license-free spectrum, so you don't need to um, get any license or, or uh, uh, ask anybody to, uh, to use this technology. It has geolocation and positioning embedded in the protocol. You can combine both public and private networks, uh, and you can really, on a granular level, fine-tune the security settings and just configure it to your liking. It, the security is also in the protocol itself and it's end-to-end -end, uh, with different layers of security. It supports firmware over your update. It has a great certification program and a massive ecosystem. In this conference alone, there are already a thousand people that uh, are watching together with you. Uh, and we, on our uh, thingsnetwork.org platform, we have now more than 160,000 developers active building all kinds of LoRaWAN solutions. So, this conference is going to be about hardware and embedded. And we all know hardware is hard. So if there's one thing that we probably would love you to learn is that if you want to go to into hardware uh, and it's new, uh, basically don't do it. So first have a look at the device repository. Look at all these devices out there. There are hundreds of LoRaWAN devices already in the field. Check them out and see if that device uh, uh, actually can satisfy your requirements. If not, um, uh, reach out to these device makers because a lot of times they also have a shop where they can help and modify these devices. Companies, for instance, like MClimate, LSIS and Tactelic, they are perfectly well suited to help you with your specific requirements if you have uh, 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 also uh, 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 a large enough volume. If that doesn't work for you, at least find an experienced design house. There are many design houses around the world that specialize in LoRaWAN, and there are a lot of things and a lot of small things can go wrong while building such a delicate RF device. So make sure you get in touch. Companies like Grin from uh, Poland, 
But uh, also uh, Miro Miko from uh, Switzerland, they already produced hundreds of thousands of LoRaWAN devices. Um, but also Comtac, they are part of a larger group. They are specialized in both manufacturing and uh, even doing healthcare related and, and, and highly certified products. Um, uh, reach out to them. Um, but also AirNAS, they are heavily focused on uh, skilled uh, uh, IoT design, uh, but also they have a lot of experience in hostile or very challenging environment, like in the maritime industry. And in the US, uh, a great partner is uh, Oxit. Uh, they also already designed for a large volume and they really know what they're doing. So if you, in the end, uh, 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 really, really want to build it yourself, uh, uh, then ask you maybe yourself your last question. Why am I doing this? Is this because it's not you, you really want to invent it? Because you have what you so call, uh, is so-called the not invented here syndrome. We would highly advise to find one of these partners and do it with them. Um, so the, all these disclaimers and warnings, and if you're still convinced you should build your own, uh, your own device, then for sure go on. So if we're actually saying like, like don't go build yourself uh, self a device, uh, and, and that's only suitable for let's say two or three percent of the ecosystem. Why would we do this conference? So what, why we do this conference about embedded hardware? Because if you're gonna brief anybody, a contractor or one of these design houses, uh, what we want you to know is that we want you to know every detail of the process and, and, and the stronger and, and the, the better your briefing, the better your product will be, the smoother the process. And if you know all these little uh, details that definitely will help you as a developer, as a product manager or as a procurement manager in this process. So therefore this, uh, 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 this event, we're actually going to build live a device and you can experience how hard it is and you can experience uh, watching an eight hour live stream of somebody soldering and go through all the steps and just suck up all that knowledge. And our goal is if you can better brief your de uh, device manufacturer, then you're gonna have a way easier life in the lower one world. So the program uh, is on the website. We're gonna talk about edge computing with Louis. Um, uh, uh, we are going to talk about uh, 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 in increasing durability by adding a, a, a gore uh, 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 filters and, 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 and materials to your device to extend uh, the durability of your device. Um, uh, we're going to uh, talk about uh, virtual antennas. That's great. We know about virtual service. Now Ignian has a virtual antenna, awesome product and service. Um, uh, Salista, from, CEO from the Risk V Inter uh, International Foundation, going to talk about open source silicon. Extremely exciting. Um, uh, a, a very uh, honored to have her here. Of course, we're going to have uh, Seed here. Very honored to have the founder and CEO, Eric. Um, Seed has been an amazing company uh, in, the, in the ecosystem and is very, very good at doing lore when. Uh, Luca from Irnos is going to uh, speak. Uh, uh, and we will have ST and Arduino uh, talking as well. So, uh, very nice, fully packed program. Uh, and in parallel at uh, 12 a.m. Uh, European time, we're going to start the eight hour live soldering session with one of our hardware engineers. And that's going to be very exciting as well. So, um, I won't hold you up any further. Uh, next up is Johan. He's going to tell you more about how we with the things stack and our software services try to make the life of the uh, hardware uh, a developer and the, the hardware manufacturer as easy as possible. So we fully support you with our software in security and provisioning. And uh, I just want to wish you a, a great conference and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this day. Welcome to this special edition of the Things Conference. I'm very excited for today. I wish uh, Orkan good luck with uh, his day of soldering. I have a quick update uh, about two things. First, the device repository, and uh, second, uh, an announcement. Very exciting, uh, especially for device makers. Uh, first, the device repository. So um, we have been working extensively with uh, device makers uh, to um, 
make it easier for them to submit their LoRaWAN device profiles, their payload codecs, um, other information, data sheets, images, other stuff about their end devices. And today I'm really happy to see uh, that we have 2,708 um, LoRaWAN device profiles in the device repository that makes it by far the biggest collection of structured data about LoRaWAN devices. So that's really exciting. We also have uh, 1,280 uh, validated payload codecs. Um, so those are uh, validations of those small functions to decode and encode um, LoRaWAN payload. Uh, so that's also really good. Uh, and for those who don't know what it looks like to add LoRaWAN devices using the device repository, uh, this is the ThinkStack console. And if you want to add a new device that is in the device repository, uh, you, can, uh, you can simply go uh, select the brand of the end device that you use. Uh, and when you select the brand, uh, you can select the model. <coughs> Um, so I think we already have dozens and dozens of uh, uh, LoRaWAN device makers in here. So let's take, for instance, uh, Adonis, uh, the uh, network tester, and it brings up all the information instantly, uh, including um, uh, the LoRaWAN version, the original parameters version, activation mode, uh, LoRaWAN capabilities. So you only have to enter the uh, specific details about the end device. Uh, and we're going to make that much easier as well, but more on that in a bit. If you are a device maker and you don't have your devices in the device repository yet, um, go to the repo and uh, find the video from Ben. He has a 14-minute walkthrough on how to add your devices to the device repository. Um, so that's definitely worth watching. The other thing I want to uh, talk about today is the join server. Uh, so what is a joint server? So first, um, the joint server is really part of the LoRaWAN network reference model. You can also see here that the joint server is not part of a particular network, but it interfaces with uh, network servers and application servers. So why, as a device maker, do you need a joint server? Um, so first reason, is the most important reason, uh, it avoids making LoRaWAN root keys available in clear text. Um, so nobody, you, you don't want anyone uh, to see your root keys. And you also don't want to, to send your root keys uh, in any shape or form uh, to your customers. Uh, and that's important because you also want to be compliant with uh, upcoming regulations uh, for IoT security um, that do not allow uh, exposing root keys um, of IoT devices. Another uh, reason to use a joint server is um, to allow your customers to securely use your end devices on any standards compliant LoRaWAN network server. It also enables your, your end customers to easily switch between uh, LoRaWAN networks without compromising security because the root keys stay in that joint server. And finally, uh, which is also really important for most device makers, is to, to know how many of your devices are actually out there and active in the field and on which network uh, they are active. So it's really important market insight that a joint server provides as well because it is part of every uh, joint procedure. So many device makers don't use a joint server because they are not using uh, secure elements. And really, you don't need to use secure elements to use a joint server. Uh, you can use any you can provision any LoRaWAN device on a on a joint server. Um, we also often hear that device makers already use safe ways to distribute their root keys. And that's fine, that's great, but still, uh, those root keys are exposed in clear text. They can be decrypted. And that's the difference really with the joint server. The joint server only sends the session keys to the network. Uh, and finally, and that's really what we what we've been listening uh, what we've been listening to is that uh, device makers don't really know how to build and operate a joint server. So we have news for you. Uh, we are introducing the Things Joint Server, uh, which is a standalone joint server that is built specifically for device makers. It's not part of the Things stack. It's a separate product. Uh, it's fully compliant with uh, the LoRaWAN backend interfaces and all the LoRaWAN uh, versions. It supports device claiming. Uh, it also supports the uh, standard QR code, but you can also uh, use your own QR codes uh, or other PIN codes or passwords to claim ownership. Um, 
it provides insight in the uh, activations, so which device was active where and when. It supports a handover from uh, the Things Join server to another join server. And we do all the interoperability testing. Uh, so you don't have to go to all the LoRaWAN network servers uh, for testing. We already did that for you. The Things Join server also supports uh, custom key derivation functions and hardware secure modules. Uh, so you can generate root keys yourself, or you can um, uh, you can derive root keys from a master key based on, for example, a serial number. And you can also interface with uh, hardware secure modules. Uh, we have different uh, deployment models, just like we have different deployment models uh, for the thing stack. Um, uh, easiest is a serverless deployment uh, to uh, Azure or AWS. Um, so this means that the Things Join server is deployed in your uh, um, uh, cloud, uh, your public cloud, um, but it doesn't deploy any compute resources. So it's very, very easy uh, to manage uh, and you don't have um, like recurring costs and virtual machines that need to stay updated. We also support a more advanced uh, deployment with Docker uh, Kubernetes. And uh, of course, we can also have a fully managed uh, offering uh, where we operate the join server for you. And last but not least, when your devices are provisioned on a, uh, on a join server, your devices will be shown with the uh, padlock. Um, uh, and that really provides the confidence uh, to your customers that the uh, root keys are safe. With that, uh, I uh, hope you enjoy the conference and I hope to see you in person on uh, the, the next conference later this year. Mm -hmm.